So in this video, we will be discussing about the DRAM organization, how it's organized, uh, and then how uh, the CAS hierarchy can interact with the DRAM. So, so far, we have assumed uh, the DRAM as a black box, and then it just responds with data whenever uh, someone provides the address. So this is the uh, picture that you must have seen. Uh, this is called a, a DIM. And, uh, we will try to understand uh, all the components that are part of uh, this particular game. So the first thing that comes is actually channel, which is nothing but the interface, uh, which is connected to the DRAM controller or the on-chip caches through which the data or address is transferred. And then uh, this is the DIM that, that I was talking about. So the DIM is actually a collection of ranks. Uh, so the front side of the dim is actually rank zero and the back side is uh, rank one and the rank contains multiple chips so all these black boxes are actually one one dram chips so these are actually uh, uh, called the dram chips and each chip is actually collection of multiple banks so uh, similar to your cache hierarchy now now there is a hierarchy even in the dram organization and each bank is a collection of rows and rows are nothing but a collection of columns okay so we will uh, go through each and uh, every term uh, in detail now so this is how uh, the front side and the back side of a particular dim looks like uh, you, you can assume that uh, there are dram uh, devices uh, at both the side of uh, a dim uh, for let's say rank 0 and rank 1 so in, in this figure uh, there are actually eight dram chips that, that you can see uh, in the, in the uh, front side of the DIM, and similarly, you will find eight DRAM chips in the back side of the DIM. So let, let's uh, look at the notion of uh, rank. So let's stick to a particular rank. As I have mentioned, rank is collection of multiple banks, right? So the the, the slide actually is a zoomed representation of uh, one of the uh, 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 memory uh, chips. So this particular chip is actually nothing but uh, uh, collection of multiple banks. And each bank, as I have told you, is a collection of uh, uh, rows, and then the rows contain multiple columns. Okay. One of the uh, key thing that we, we should remember when we talk about a rank uh, contains multiple chips, and uh, a, a chip contains uh, uh, multiple banks, uh, that there is a terminology called the width of uh, a particular DRAM device, and uh, that you will see in the very next slide. So what is happening now, if you look at a particular uh, chip within a rank, so this is the chip and out of this chip, let's say the chip has four banks. So we have zoomed out uh, one bank, right? And you will find the rows and columns, right? So whenever uh, you get a cast miss, the request goes through this hierarchy of uh, rank, bank, and rows and columns, and finally the DRAM will respond with the data. So let us assume uh, we have a 64-bit uh, channel which can uh, communicate 64-bit data, right? Now we are pointing into a particular bank. Let's say this is bank zero, right? So what happens uh, in one go is in one cycle each of these banks from different chips will start sending uh, data and in this case in one go they are sending 16 bits so since there are four dram chips uh, at the end we are getting uh, 64 bits data okay so this this width can uh, vary depending on the number of chips we have and the width of this bus but this is just a typical example so this is what I was referring to in the previous slide, uh, that each uh, device has something called the width, okay? And here the width is 16 bits, which means, so there are 16 arrays that we can think about for a given bank. So let's say this bank has 16 arrays and Array is nothing but a collection of rows and columns, right? 
and each of these array is actually sending one bit. So from all all of them, you if you start getting one bit, one bit, one bit, right? So finally, you will get sixteen bits from one particular DRAM chip, right? So that's that's actually the device uh, width. It's uh, uh, the the way it is named is uh, called as let's say a DRAM with x sixteen uh, 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 width, sixteen stands for sixteen bits. Okay. So uh, this is the 16-bit interface that we have been discussing, and uh, in one go from one chip, we will get uh, 16 bits of information or data. So let's look at uh, the complete picture now. Let's say each rank has a 64-bit wide data bus, and if each rank is of width x8, that means our DRAM uh, chips are uh, containing eight arrays. So how, how many uh, uh, DRAM chips can we have, right? So obviously, uh, you want to communicate 64-bit uh, data. And, and uh, the rank is actually having a width uh, x8. So the number of uh, chips will be uh, 8. So similarly, if you go for an X4 uh, uh, specification, then you will find that the number of DRAM chips is uh, 16. And uh, 16 uh, DRAM chips uh, transferring 64-bit uh, uh, data in one go. Uh, X4 tells, tells you that a given chip is actually consist of four arrays, and each array is nothing but a combination of rows and columns. So where exactly is the one bit? So the one bit is actually somewhere stored in, inside the array, uh, which is part of the bank. So similar to the CAS examples uh, that, that we have discussed last month, so you will find uh, a bit line and a word line, and the intersection between a bit line and a word line will actually give you uh, a particular uh, one bit, right? So this is the bit line and this is the word line. So this is also known as row in the in the DRAM terminology or a page. I remember this is different from the OS page. Uh, do, don't get confused with the OS page. So your DRAM row is also uh, known as the page. Okay. So whenever you see a bit line is getting intersected with a word line, uh, you actually store one bit. So these are like one bit of information, right? So now when a request comes, uh, you need to get the data from a particular uh, row. So that's why you need a row decoder so let's say this is one array and uh, these are the rows and columns what you need is given an address that there should be a mechanism to find which row uh, the address is uh, mapped to so row decoder will actually uh, provide you a particular let's say row number let's say this is the row number or row of interest and then once you uh, find out that row you actually get the data and put it into a buffer called row buffer uh, the other uh, technical name of uh, this particular uh, buffer is also called uh, sense amplifier because you kind of get the data or drive the data from uh, this particular row into uh, the row buffer. And th this is the process like you select a row, put it in the row buffer. And once you have the row in the row buffer, now you have to find out a particular column, right? Since it's red in color, uh, I don't think you will be able to distinguish. Uh, the marking so you have to pick a particular column and then uh, you respond with that column so typically you will find that uh, the size of the rows are in kbs let's say 2 kb 4 kb 8 kb uh, 16 kb and uh, we should remember that each bank has a row buffer okay so remember the dram chips and each dram chips is collection of banks and then uh, each bank is having one row buffer okay and this row of her uh, if you can correlate this is actually exploiting locality it's actually storing the last used row with an anticipation that this row will be used again for example it let's say this is row number two so this is row number zero one this is two and this is three okay so if you are putting the data of uh, row number three in the row of her uh, then it 
speculates that in future also you will send request to row number three and since it's in kbs so uh, if there is locality uh, in your accesses you will actually get hit in the row over. so let's take an example so we are dealing with a two gigabit uh, don't get confused with byte two gigabit into eight dram chips okay so that means in total it's a two gigabyte capacity right so each chip is storing two gigabit and there are eight uh, DRAM chips. Okay. This is uh, one side of the rank. So if you have uh, both the side uh, of the rank or bo both the side of the DIM will actually give you four GB capacity, right? But let's look at only one side of the rank. So in total, uh, if you look at from the DIM perspective, you will have 16 chips, right? Eight for uh, rank zero and eight for rank one so there are two additional chips that are stored uh, ecc which is known as the error correcting codes uh, we won't go into the detail of this uh, but but these are used to uh, make sure that we don't get any uh, for faulty uh, cells in the dram and then the, the chips actually play a helping hand uh, if, if something goes wrong right and then as we have already discussed, there is a 64-bit interface for data, and we, we need an 8-bit uh, ECC interface. So in total, you will find 72-bit uh, wide DIM. So the number of uh, pins uh, in the DIM uh, figure, you will find there are 72-bit, 72, 72 pins. So if you are transferring a 64-byte CAS line, uh, it will take eight transfers of each eight bytes. So remember, 8 bytes is 64 bits. This is our uh, interface for transferring data from, from uh, the DRAM to the CAS. And since the CAS line is 64 bytes, we need to transfer data from DRAM eight times, right? So, and if we go one level uh, further into the DRAM organization, this eight byte will actually come from eight chips, right? and which means it's actually eight bits from one chip right eight bits is one byte from one chip you will get one byte from uh, eight chips you'll get eight bytes that is in one go you will transfer 64 bits you have to transfer 64 bytes that's why you have to uh, keep on uh, sending the data from uh, your dram device for eight times okay so this is the assumption that one bit is coming from the DRAM array, assuming there are eight DRAM arrays per band. Okay. So let's let's look at how DRAM is interacting with LLC. So let, let's assume uh, this is a 64 byte uh, uh, data, which is present in this particular address. And we want to get the data from the DRAM into, uh, let's say the CAS. Okay. So, we will get an address and the address will have a mapping uh, in, the, in the form of rank, bank, uh, rows and columns. Let's assume the address is mapped to uh, row zero. From there, uh, it will actually find out the column and let's assume that uh, we want to start communicating or transferring data from column zero. So this is what we have done now. We have uh, transferred uh, eight byte of information uh, from, from uh, row zero. After that, we move to another column in the same row. Okay. So that will send another eight bytes and this process will go on. Right. So if you look at from, from a latency perspective to transfer a 64 byte CAS block, if we assume that the DRAM uh, has its own clock and it has its own uh, notion of uh, frequency, then it will take eight DRAM cycles. Right. In one cycle, you will transfer eight bytes. In eight cycles you will transfer the entire 64 bit okay so uh, this is a typical uh, address mapping that uh, you will get in uh, commercial uh, dram controllers so the idea is given a physical address how will you go into a particular rank bank or a row and column right so it's similar to your cache mapping uh, given an address how can you go to a particular set number particular uh, uh, and then and compare the tag here you have to uh, look at the rank bank rows and column right 
So there are two uh, mappings that are possible. So this example shows it's a two gigabyte DRAM, uh, eight banks, 16,000 rows and 2000 columns per bank. Okay. So if you look at to, to find out uh, a particular row, you need 14 bits, right? And uh, there are eight banks. So you need three bits to find out one of the bank. And then there are 2000 uh, 2k columns so you need uh, 11 bits to identify a particular column right so if you look at this particular address mapping uh, this is a pretty straightforward one right so lower three bits we are ignoring because anyway uh, we will be sending uh, eight bytes so there, there is no interest in finding out uh, a particular byte uh, in, in the transfer right this is the minimum uh, atomic unit of transfer after that you are actually uh, storing the column and then bank and then row okay but if you compare uh, this address mapping with uh, the upper one here what is happening is you will find that, that there is something interesting happening at the end of six bits okay and the column bits are kind of scattered into two different places so there are three bits of column here and rest eight bits are here and then there is a bank right so if you correlate with your cast line size uh, which is actually 64 bytes so 64 bytes will take six bits right so what it is trying to do through this uh, address mapping is it's trying to interleave at a cast line level right where so th this is what it is the first one it's a cast interleaving addressing where the consecutive cast blocks are kind of uh, getting mapped into consecutive uh, banks, right? Uh, because after 64 bytes, you will find that the next line is going to bank one. The very next line will go to bank two and like that, right? So, so eight consecutive cast line will go to eight different banks. But if you look at uh, row interleaving addressing here, uh, that's not the case, right? Here, uh, a given row, is actually uh, uh, get, getting uh, scattered across uh, banks, right? So, for example, uh, consecutive rows will actually go to different banks. So, this is let's say a particular row number, it will go to a particular uh, bank. As we have 16k rows, the moment you cross the 14 bit value, it will actually go to a different bank, right? So, there are uh, pros and cons for uh, this two address mapping, but usually, cast interleaving will. Uh, uh, make sure that we we exploit locality and then different banks are busy in uh, responding to the request from cache. So you can also think about uh, address mapping with multiple channels, right? You you need a few bits, let's say for channel somewhere here or maybe uh, somewhere here in the middle, depending on how you want to exploit. Uh, let's say you have two channels or four channels, so you need to store two bits somewhere, right? Along with this uh, notion of uh, uh, bank and then and, and row and column okay so uh, think about it and and uh, think about all other uh, possibilities in terms of address mapping so you can also think about uh, rank bank channel column and row in uh, this particular order or this particular order where channel is actually at the lower bytes right here channel was actually not at the lower bytes column is actually at the lower bytes and then uh, here we are actually shifting columns to the higher bits. Right? So you can think about the pros and cons. What are the benefits with, with this addressing uh, mapping? Uh, and then you will find that some of them actually uh, uh, really bad in terms of exploiting locality and some of them will actually do good in terms of improving parallelism uh, across different banks so that uh, we'll get data from multiple banks in uh, less amount of time. So uh, think about it and uh, discuss uh, among uh, yourselves. With that, I will stop. Thank you.